Hi, Sebastian. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Paz. I just thought I'd stop by since I happen to live in Grenoble. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to ask you a few questions. When you started your career 20 years ago, did you have any idea how technology would turn out over the next 20 years? Yes, that's true. I, I have uh, the privilege of uh, joining CLT exactly 20 years ago. And uh, it was a great achievement for me. And uh, I have still the, the same enthusiasm and the same pride in belonging to this uh, wonderful institute. Uh, at that time, uh, there was no electric car. There was, uh, we had no smartphone, of course. And uh, Google and uh, internet was uh, still in its infancy. And so over the last 20 years, we have seen many, many incredible uh, technology progress, uh, technological progress. I, uh, as for me, I have the opportunity to begin my career uh, working on inertial sensors. And I still remember that at that time, we considered that uh, gyrometer uh, technology was too complex to be miniaturized and to be low cost. And a few years after, uh, with the, the first smartphone, uh, the situation has changed radically. And uh, this kind of uh, sensor became uh, low cost, became affordable uh, due to massive investment and it was also the case for many other components, electri uh, electronics components, sensor and so on and so forth. So it illustrates very well how things could change very quickly. And uh, for me, in fact, over the last 20 years, the, the major uh, change was due to uh, telecommunication, of course, smartphone, but also 4G, 5G. Uh, because when you are able to transmit and receive data, it changed everything. And from another point of view, um, uh, at this time, um, <coughs> there was a, a, a good balance between production, between uh, different regions for the production of microelectronics. Uh, if my memory serves me right, at this time, in, in Europe, uh, we had uh, some, somewhat like 25% uh, of the total production of uh, electronics. And as, uh, as you know, uh, the situation is completely different today. We have seen uh, an unprecedented uh, ultra specialization of different regions. And today, the major, uh, the, the major part of the production is made in Asia. And so this is a totally different uh, situation, which has been highlighted by the pandemic, and which also explained today that we see uh, um, let's say, um, um, geopolitical issues uh, between China and the uh, U.S. So um, now what changes do you expect to occur over the next 20 years, if you want to take a guess, or a shorter time frame? And For me, it's really difficult to predict the future. Uh, recently, I read um, uh, an article from uh, Professor Bartlett from University of Colo Colorado explaining that, in fact, the human race is uh, unable to uh, work uh, to figure out what is an exponential uh, evolution. And in fact, with the technology for communication and for information, we have to deal with uh, exponential evolution due to the fact that the Moore's law, at least, is an exponential uh, function. And so uh, today, of course, generative AI is a major breakthrough uh, that uh, will disrupt nearly every sector, including the semiconductor itself. And of course, it will uh, offer many, um, many opportunities, such as uh, smartphones, such as internet. And, uh, but the, the fact is that uh, in this decade, we will have to face with the fact that we will, uh, uh, we will enter limit, limits in terms of materials, limits in terms of energy. And so uh, this is, I think, uh, the role of research technological organization to really think from now on how we can tackle this challenge, how we can reduce drastically uh, the energy, for example, uh, needed for uh, chips consumption. But the major challenge we will have to, to tackle is how we can do uh, so that uh, semiconductor becomes um, a solution for sustainability and not an issue.
Okay. Now, along those lines, um, the way different regions do innovation is different. I, I grew up in America, mm -hmm. and I started my career in the United States, mm -hmm. and I could observe firsthand how easy it seems to be to start a company, whereas in Europe it's a little bit different. But there are some structures here that you're very much part of that work very well, and I wanted to know if you can compare the RTOs, mm -hmm. uh, research technology organizations, and their applied research, and how that structure works compared to other yes. regions. As I said just before, uh, we have a NIPA specialization of the value chain for semiconductor and research technological organizations are a part of this value chain. And uh, in Europe, we, we have a unique position with, uh, such, with RTO such as CLAT uh, because we are able to make the link uh, between advanced research and industry. And this is uh, precisely the objective of the European CHIPS Act to really strengthen this position and uh, to become a kind of hub for research and for uh, impacting, of course, uh, industry. So uh, I think that uh, we, we have an important role to play for the future uh, in order to, uh, uh, to speed up uh, the, uh, the time between uh, innovation and industrialization. So this is the first objective. And the second objective is also to, to, to address many applications, uh, for example, uh, ap application for automotive, for healthcare, for industry, uh, which are typically um, applica European uh, application. And so for this objective, the, 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 the size, the critical size is really important. And uh, the lab to fab concept is really key for us uh, we had a very uh, important example with what we have made with um, uh, our, our partner uh, Soitech with the SmartSeq process. We were able uh, to start starting from the ID to go to the uh, facility, the industrial facility in only four years. Okay, so um, again, you know, I've been living in Europe for um, over 26 years in Grenoble, in Germany before that. And uh, one of the things I've observed myself is that uh, the entrepreneurial spirit, I, I find it, it is relatively rich in France and in, in, in Europe, but the problem is uh, going from that spirit to actually starting a company that succeeds. I'm just wondering if you have anything, that, any comments to make on the entrepreneurial spirit itself in France and Europe, in a larger sense, Europe. And also, it, what, what could be done? Is it, is it a matter of, of business structures? I mean, I know there's certain things if you're in France, if you're, when you go from 49 to 50 employees, you have all sorts of new structures you have to implement, things like that. Do you have any comments on that? My feeling is that we have made unprecedented efforts and progress uh, in order to stimulate uh, this spirit over the last years. Uh, for example, in France with the French tech program, with uh, great success. And, uh, and it is also the case with uh, CLAT. We have a, 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 an internal uh, support program uh, that makes that every year uh, we, we are able to launch between three and five uh, world-class startups. So for me, it is not an issue today. Uh, the, the trouble today is really to, um, to, to have the scaling up of uh, this startup, and uh, it is uh, particularly uh, uh, an issue when you have to deal with deep tech startups. It's not the same when you have to deal with uh, 10 uh, or 20 people and when you have to, um, to deal with uh, 100 or, or 200 uh, people, which is often the case uh, with um, deep tech startups. So my, uh, my feeling is that uh, we really need to, uh, to accompany the startup uh, to make investment, uh, to be very rapid, of course, and to also uh, be very good for management, for organization of these big, let's say, new companies. Okay, so um, what are the big challenges in technology in the near future? So I, I will speak for CLAT. Uh, clearly our goal uh, for the, the mid and, and more longer term will be to, uh, to address the, uh, the, the pilot line, uh, the European pilot line called FAMES. This pilot line will, uh, in fact, have two major objectives. The first objective will be to boost uh, the FDSOI technology, fully depleted silicon on insulator technology. Uh, this technology was born in Europe, uh, and uh, we can say it has been invented by CLH, in fact. And uh, we are convinced that we can find more performances with a node 
at uh, uh, seven uh, nanometer size. So this will be our first objective because this technology is really important for many applications such as automotive or healthcare because it offers uh, high performance for embedded computing, but it also offers uh, high performance for RF uh, application. And of course, it's a low power uh, technology. And the second main objective of the pilot line will be to, um, uh, to extend our platform and to open this platform to many players in Europe, uh, starting from academic players, going to industrial players, of course. And it will be a radically change in our manner to, to work every day. And uh, I make the best that in uh, 10 years, uh, CLAT will be at the center of a major hub in Europe that will address uh, many, uh, many RTO and many uh, industrial players. Okay. Well, that's very interesting and it's a very useful perspective. Thank you very much, Sebastian, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.